Koine Greek UK, US, also known as Alexandrian dialect, Common Attic, Hellenistic or Biblical Greek, was the common super-regional form of Greek spoken and written during the Hellenistic period, the Roman Empire, and the early Byzantine Empire, or late antiquity. It evolved from the spread of Greek following the conquests of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC, and served as the lingua franca of much of the Mediterranean region and the Middle East during the following centuries. It was based mainly on Attic and related Ionic speech forms, with various admixtures brought about through dialect leveling with other varieties. Koine Greek included styles ranging from more conservative literary forms to the spoken vernaculars of the time. As the dominant language of the Byzantine Empire, it developed further into medieval Greek, which then turned into modern Greek. Literary Koine was the medium of much of post classical Greek literary and scholarly writing, such as the works of Plutarch and Polybius. Koine is also the language of the Christian New Testament, of the Septuagint the 3rd century BC Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, and of most early Christian theological writing by the Church Fathers. In this context, Koine Greek is also known as Biblical, New Testament, Ecclesiastical, or Patristic Greek. It continues to be used as the liturgical language of services in the Greek Orthodox Church. Name The English language name Koine derives from the Koine Greek term he Koine dialectos he Koine dialectos, the common dialect. The Greek word Koine, Koine itself means common. The word is pronounced, or in U.S. English and in U.K. English. The pronunciation of the word in coin itself gradually changed from coin e acute close to the classical Attic pronunciation coin to Kentucky ni close to the modern Greek c ni. In Greek, the language has been referred to as Hellenistic coin, Hellenistic koine, in the sense of Hellenistic superregional language. Ancient scholars used the term coin in several different senses. Scholars such as Apollonius de Scolis 2nd century AD and Aelius Herodianus 2nd century AD maintained the term coin to refer to the Proto-Greek language, while others used it to refer to any vernacular form of Greek speech which differed somewhat from the literary language. When Koine Greek became a language of literature by the 1st century BC, some people distinguished two forms, written as the literary post-classical form, which should not be confused with Atticism, and vernacular as the day-to-day -day vernacular. Others chose to refer to coin as the dialect of Alexandria or Alexandrian dialect, he Alexandrian dialectos or even the universal dialect of its time. Modern classicists have often used the former sense. Topic. Origins and history Topic. Coin Greek arose as a common dialect within the armies of Alexander the Great. Under the leadership of Macedon, their newly formed common variety was spoken from the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt to the Seleucid Empire of Mesopotamia. It replaced existing ancient Greek dialects with an everyday form that people anywhere could understand. Though elements of Koine Greek took shape in Classical Greece, the post-classical period of Greek is defined as beginning with the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC, when cultures under Greek sway in turn began to influence the language. The passage into the next period, known as Medieval Greek, dates from the foundation of Constantinople by Constantine the Great in 330. The post-classical period of Greek thus refers to the creation and evolution of Koine Greek throughout the entire Hellenistic and Roman eras of history until the start of the Middle Ages. The linguistic roots of the common Greek dialect had been unclear since ancient times. During the Hellenistic period, most scholars thought of Koine as the result of the mixture of the four main ancient Greek dialects. He ectun tetaran sinistosa, the composition of the four. This view was supported in the early 20th century by Paul Kretschmer in his book Die Entstehung der Koine, while Ulrich von Willemowitz Mollendorf and Antoine Meillet, based on the intense ionic elements of the coin such as cis instead of, and ars instead of rer thalasa thalata arsenikos arenikos considered coin to be a simplified form of ionic the view accepted by most scholars today was given by the greek linguist georgios hatsidakis who showed that despite the composition of the four the stable nucleus of coin greek is attic in other words coin greek can be regarded as attic with the admixture of elements especially from ionic but also from other dialects 
The degree of importance of the non-Attic linguistic elements on coin can vary depending on the region of the Hellenistic world. In that respect, the varieties of coin spoken in the Ionian colonies of Anatolia, e.g., Pontus would have more intense Ionic Greek characteristics than others, and those of Laconia and Cyprus would preserve some Doric and Arcado-Cypriot characteristics, respectively. The literary coin of the Hellenistic age resembles Attic in such a degree that it is often mentioned as common Attic. Topic. Sources Topic. The first scholars who studied coin, both in Alexandrian and contemporary times, were classicists whose prototype had been the literary Attic Greek of the Classical period and frowned upon any other variety of ancient Greek. Coin Greek was therefore considered a decayed form of Greek which was not worthy of attention. The reconsideration on the historical and linguistic importance of Coin Greek began only in the early 19th century, where renowned scholars conducted a series of studies on the evolution of coin throughout the entire Hellenistic period and Roman Empire. The sources used on the studies of coin have been numerous and of unequal reliability. The most significant ones are the inscriptions of the post-classical periods and the papyri, for being two kinds of texts which have authentic content and can be studied directly. Other significant sources are the Septuagint, the somewhat literal Greek translation of the Old Testament, and the Greek New Testament. The teaching of the Testaments was aimed at the most common people, and for that reason they use the most popular language of the era. Information can also be derived from some Atticist scholars of the Hellenistic and Roman periods, who, in order to fight the evolution of the language, published works which compared the correct Attic against the wrong coin by citing examples. For example, Phrynichus Arabius during the 2nd century AD wrote, Basilisa Udas ton Archaean Ipan alla Basileia e Basilis Basilisa queen none of the ancients said, but Basileia queen or Basilis queen. Dioria eschatos adokimon ant auto de prothesmian aries dioria deadline is extremely disreputable, instead you will say prothesmia appointed time. Pantote mi lege a la hecastote chi dia pantos do not say pantote always, but hecastote every time and dia pantos continually. Other sources can be based on random findings such as inscriptions on vases written by popular painters, mistakes made by Atticists due to their imperfect knowledge of Attic Greek or even some surviving Greco-Latin glossaries of the Roman period, e.g. Calemeran elves bono die, venisti, good day, you came? Ian Taylor's eld meth hemen si vis, veni mecum, if you want, come with us, pu ubi, where? Prose phylon hemeteron lucian ad amicum nostrum lucium, to our friend Lucius. T gar ache quid enum habit, indeed, what does he have, what is it with him? Aristae agrotat, he's sick. Finally, a very important source of information on the ancient coin is the modern Greek language with all its dialects and its own coin form, which have preserved some of the ancient language's oral linguistic details which the written tradition has lost. For example, Pontic and Cappadocian Greek preserved the ancient pronunciation of eta as epsilon, knife sinilikos times and pagadi for standard modern Greek knife, sinilikos times and pagadi etc., while the Siconian language preserved the long alpha instead of eta, hamera astropa limna chua etc., and the other local characteristics of Doric Greek, dialects from the southern part of the Greek-speaking regions Dodecanese, Cyprus, etc., preserved the pronunciation of the double similar consonants, all las hel lata thalas sa while others pronounce in many words upsilon as o or preserve ancient double forms chromian krem mayan rax rocks etc. Linguistic phenomena like the above imply that those characteristics survived within coin, which in turn had countless variations in the Greek-speaking world. Topic. Types Topic. Topic. Biblical coin. Topic. Biblical coin refers to the varieties of Koine Greek used in Bible translations into Greek and related texts. Its main sources are The Septuagint, a 3rd century BC Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible and texts not included in the Hebrew Bible The Greek New Testament, compiled originally in Greek Topic. Septuagint Greek Topic. 
There has been some debate to what degree Biblical Greek represents the mainstream of contemporary spoken coin and to what extent it contains specifically Semitic substratum features. These could have been induced either through the practice of translating closely from Biblical Hebrew or Aramaic originals, or through the influence of the regional non-standard Greek spoken by originally Aramaic-speaking Hellenized Jews. Some of the features discussed in this context are the Septuagint's normative absence of the particles men and day, and the use of egeneto to denote, it came to pass, some features of Biblical Greek which are thought to have originally been non-standard elements eventually found their way into the main of the Greek language. S.J. Thackeray, in A Grammar of the Old Testament in Greek according to the Septuagint 1909, wrote that only the five books of the Pentateuch, parts of the Book of Joshua and the Book of Isaiah may be considered good coin. One issue debated by scholars is whether and how much the translation of the Pentateuch influenced the rest of the Septuagint, including the translation of Isaiah. Another point that scholars have debated is the use of Ecclesia Ecclesia as a translation for the Hebrew Kahal Kahal. Old Testament scholar James Barr has been critical of etymological arguments that Ecclesia refers to the community called by God to constitute his people. Kyriakola Papadimitrio explains, he maintains that ecclesia is merely used for designating the notion of meeting and gathering of men, without any particular character. Therefore, etymologizing this word could be needless, or even misleading, when it could guide to false meanings, for example that ecclesia is a name used for the people of God, Israel. <laughs> New Testament Greek the authors of the New Testament follow the Septuagint translations for over half their quotations from the Old Testament. The historical present tense is a term used for present tense verbs that are used in some narrative sections of the New Testament to describe events that are in the past with respect to the speaker. This is seen more in works attributed to Mark and John than Luke. It is used 151 times in the Gospel of Mark in passages where a reader might expect a past tense verb. Scholars have presented various explanations for this. In the early 20th century, some scholars argued that the use of a historical present tense in Mark was due to the influence of Aramaic, but this theory fell out of favor in the 1960s. Another group of scholars believed the historical present tense was used to heighten the dramatic effect, and this interpretation was favored in the New American Bible translation. In Volume 2 of the 1929 edition of A Grammar of the New Testament, W. F. Howard argues that the heavy use of the historical present in Herodotus and Thucydides, compared with the relatively infrequent usage by Polybius and Xenophon was evidence that heavy use of this verb tense is a feature of vernacular coin, but other scholars have argued that the historical present can be a literary form to "...denote semantic shifts to more prominent material." Patristic Greek Topic. The term patristic Greek is sometimes used for the Greek written by the Greek church fathers, the early Christian theologians in late antiquity. Christian writers in the earliest time tended to use a simple register of koine, relatively close to the spoken language of their time, following the model of the Bible. After the 4th century, when Christianity became the state church of the Roman Empire, more learned registers of koine also came to be used. Topic: <laughs> Differences between Attic and Koine Greek. Topic: The study of all sources from the 6 centuries which are symbolically covered by Koine reveals linguistic changes from ancient Greek on elements of the spoken language including grammar, word formation, vocabulary and phonology sound system. Most new forms start off as rare and gradually become more frequent until they are established. As most of the changes between modern and ancient Greek were introduced via Koine, Koine is largely familiar and at least partly intelligible to most writers and speakers of modern Greek. Topic. Differences in grammar Topic. Topic. Phonology Topic. During the period generally designated as Koine Greek a great deal of phonological change occurred. At the start of the period pronunciation was virtually identical to ancient Greek phonology, whereas in the end it had much more in common with modern Greek phonology. 
The three most significant changes were the loss of vowel length distinction, the replacement of the pitch accent system by a stress accent system, and the monophthongization of several diphthongs. The ancient distinction between long and short vowels was gradually lost, and from the 2nd century BC all vowels were isochronic all vowels having equal length. From the 2nd century BC, the ancient Greek pitch accent was replaced with a stress accent. Silosis, loss of rough breathing, h. Rough breathing had already been lost in the Ionic Greek varieties of Anatolia and the Aeolic Greek of Lesbos. I a oi a i e i o i were simplified to a, eta, omega, a e o. The diphthongs i, a, and oi became monophthongs. I, which had already been pronounced as by the Boeotians since the 4th century BC and written eta, e.g., pays, share memphome, became in coin, too, first a long vowel, and then, with the loss of distinctive vowel length and openness distinction, e, merging with epsilon. The diphthong A had already merged with iota in the 5th century BC in Argos, and by the 4th century BC in Corinth e Legus, and it acquired this pronunciation also in coin. The diphthong oi fronted to y, merging with upsilon. The diphthong yi came to be pronounced yj, but eventually lost its final element and also merged with upsilon. The diphthong o had been already raised to u, in the 6th century BC, and remains so in modern Greek. The diphthongs O and U came to be pronounced avenue ev via a beta e beta, but are partly assimilated to a f e f before the voiceless consonants theta, kappa, xi, pi, sigma, tau, phi, chi, and psi. Simple vowels mostly preserved their ancient pronunciations. Eta, e, classically pronounced, was raised and merged with iota. In the 10th century AD, upsilon, oi, y, unrounded to merge with iota. These changes are known as ioticism. The consonants also preserved their ancient pronunciations to a great extent, except beta, gamma, delta, phi, theta, chi and zeta. Beta, gamma, delta, which were originally pronounced, b, d, became the fricatives, v, via, beta, which they still are today, except when preceded by a nasal consonant, mu, nu, in that case, they retain their ancient pronunciations e.g. gambros greater than gampros, ambros, andras greater than antras, andras, angelos greater than angelos, ilos. The latter three phi, theta, chi, which were initially pronounced as aspirates, p, t, k, respectively, developed into the fricatives, f, via, theta, and, x. Finally zeta, which is still metrically categorized as a double consonant with xi and psi because it may have initially been pronounced as sidi zd, or ds, dz, later acquired its modern-day value of, z. Topic. New Testament Greek phonology Topic. The Koine Greek in the table represents a reconstruction of New Testament Koine Greek, deriving to some degree from the dialect spoken in Judea and Galilee during the 1st century and similar to the dialect spoken in Alexandria, Egypt. The realizations of certain phonemes differ from the more standard Attic dialect of Koine. Note that gamma has sprintized, with palatal allophone before front vowels and a plosive allophone after nasals, while beta is beginning to develop a fricative articulation intervocalically. Phi, theta, and chi still preserve their ancient aspirated plosive values, while the unaspirated stops pi, tau, kappa have perhaps begun to develop voiced allophones after nasals. Initial aspiration has also likely become an optional sound for many speakers of the popular variety. Monophthongization, including the initial stage in the fortition of the second element in the o, u diphthongs, and the loss of vowel timing distinctions are carried through, but there is still a distinction between the four front vowels, e, e, I, and, Y, which is still rounded. Topic. Sample coin texts Topic. The following texts show differences from Attic Greek in all aspects, grammar, morphology, vocabulary and can be inferred to show differences in phonology. The following comments illustrate the phonological development within the period of coin. The phonetic transcriptions are tentative, and are intended to illustrate two different stages in the reconstructed development, an early conservative variety still relatively close to classical Attic, and a somewhat later, more progressive variety approaching modern Greek in some respects. <laughs> Sample 1a Roman decree Topic. 
The following excerpt, from a decree of the Roman Senate to the town of Thisbe in Boeotia in 170 BC, is rendered in a reconstructed pronunciation representing a hypothetical conservative variety of mainland Greek koine in the early Roman period. The transcription shows raising of eta to e, partial pre-consonantal word final raising of a and a to i, retention of pitch accent and retention of word initial h, the rough breathing. Peri hun this beta is logus epoi santo peri tun kath hau tau aus pragmaton hoitines en te filii te hemeterae enemaein and hopos autois dothos and omicron his ta kath houtus pragmata exigisantai peri tutu tu pragmatos hutos adwaxen hopos cointos manios strategos tun ek tes sinkletu pi in te apataxe hoi and autoi ek tun demosion pra gem aton kai tes idias pistios fenantai peri ho en tizbi circumflex s Lu s e p o j e acute santo, peri tu n cat hot u circumflex s p r a motto n, hoitines n t p ilia i t he metera i enemy nan, hopo s autois dot o circumflex sin hoist ta cat hot u grave s p r a acute mata e k s e e acute sa n t a i, peri t u acute tu tu p r a acute mottos h u acute to s adwaxen, hopo s k intus manios straight os to n ek te s cycle e acute tu pente apotaxi. Hoi an auto iac to n demosio n pra motto n chi te s idia s pistio s p ano n tai concerning those matters about which the citizens of Thisbe made representations. Concerning their own affairs, the following decision was taken concerning the proposal that those who remained true to our friendship should be given the facilities to conduct their own affairs, that our praetor, Governor Quintus Manius should delegate five members of the Senate who seemed to him appropriate in the light of their public actions and individual good faith. Topic. Sample 2 Greek New Testament Topic. The following excerpt, the beginning of the Gospel of John, is rendered in a reconstructed pronunciation representing a progressive popular variety of koine in the early Christian era. Modernizing features include the loss of vowel length distinction, monophthongization, transition to stress accent, and raising of eta to i. Also seen here are the bilabial fricative pronunciation of diphthongs O and U, loss of initial, H, fricative values for beta and gamma, and partial post-nasal voicing of voiceless stops. N R K N ho logos chi ho logos n pros tun theon chi theos n ho logos hutos n n r k pros tun theon panta di auto e geneto chi choris auto e geneto ud n ho jagenon. N auto e zoe n chi he zoe n to fos tun anthropon. Chi to fos n te scotiae fene chi he scotia auto o cataleben n r k i in o lose, k o lose im bros to n t e o n k t e o s in o lose, u t o s in n r k i pros to n t e o n panda dia tu e geneto, k k o risa tu e geneto ude n o geonon, and a to zo i in, k i zo i in to p o s ton and t ropon, k to p o s n d s k o t a p e n i, k i s k o t a a to you ka tela beta n in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Topic notes. Topic. Topic. References Topic. Abel, F. M. Grammaire du Grec Biblique. Allen, W. Sidney, Vox Graeca, A Guide to the Pronunciation of Classical Greek 3rd ed., Cambridge University Press, 1987. ISBN 0-521-33555-8. Andriotis, Nikolaus P. History of the Greek Language Booth, Randall, He Coin Prophora Coin Greek of Early Roman Period Bruce, Frederick F. The Books and the Parchments, Some Chapters on the Transmission of the Bible, 3rd ed. Westwood, N.J., Ray Vale, 1963. Chapters 2 and 5. Conybear, F.C. and Stock, St. George. Grammar of Septuagint Greek, with selected readings, vocabularies, and updated indexes. Horrocks, Jeffrey C. 2010. Greek, A History of the Language and Its Speakers 2nd ed. Oxford, Blackwell.
Smith, Herbert Weir 1956, Greek Grammar, Harvard University Press, ISBN 0-674-36250-0. Topic further reading topic Bakker, Egbert J., ed. 2010. A Companion to the Ancient Greek Language. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell. Blass, Friedrich, and Albert de Brunner, 1961. Greek Grammar of the New Testament and Other Early Christian Literature. Translated and revised by R. W. Funk. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. Christidis, Anastasios Foivos, ed. 2007. A History of Ancient Greek, From the Beginnings to Late Antiquity. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. Colvin, Stephen C. 2007. A Historical Greek Reader, Mycenaean to the Koine. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Easterling, P. E., and Carol Handley, 2001. Greek Scripts, An Illustrated Introduction. London, Society for the Promotion of Hellenic Studies. Evans, T. V., and Dirk Obink, E. D. S. 2009. The Language of the Papyri. Oxford, Oxford Univ. Press. Gignick, Francis T. 1976-1981. A Grammar of the Greek Papyri of the Roman and Byzantine Periods. 2 vols. Milan, Cisalpino la Goliardica. Horrocks, Geoffrey, 2010. Greek, A History of the Language and Its Speakers. 2nd ed. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell. Palmer, Leonard R. 1980. The Greek Language. London, Faber and Faber. Stevens, Gerald L. 2009. New Testament Greek Intermediate, From Morphology to Translation. Cambridge, UK, Lutterworth Press. 2009. New Testament Greek Primer. Cambridge, UK, Lutterworth Press. Topic external links Topic Free Coin Greek Keyboard A Unicode keyboard originally developed by Char Mateovsky for use by Wester Institute scholars The Biblical Greek Forum and online community for Biblical Greek Greek language. Com dictionaries, manuscripts of the Greek New Testament, and tools for applying linguistics to the study of Hellenistic Greek Diglot A daily d-glot or triglot reading